Alrighty, action 2023. Why someone would or would not want to buy an air kayak. It's your good old buddy Brooks, your middle aged man child here at Granny's house. Let's say thanks to my buddy Zach for this hat. I last year I had my nice Adidas hat blow away and he gave me a hat and blew away there at Indiana Dunes. Nice water area. I got this because I got a pair of these for around 700 bucks. And they came from an old guy who used to take him to Alaska. The guy was in Ohio and he used to take him to Alaska, he said. And if you look at the picture, these are still around, I think, advanced elements. I'm going to flip it over soon. Uh, they're still being sold, I think, at places like Cabela's and REI. So obviously it's a, like a long-standing design. I think this might be like a, I'm just going to say an early 2000s model. But it might be as late as like 2010 or 12. Um, this is an Expedition kayak. It has a backbone in it. I'll talk about that. Why is it flipped over? Because I'm starting its advantages and disadvantages, pros and cons of buying an air kayak. Well, the thing never really tracked straight, and I never really have gotten, I don't know, this, this fin just always sits kind of crooked. I don't know if it was just laying on the ground like that. I'd probably put a torch on it, or, and, and it never, these are, if you look at it, it has in it what's called the backbone right now. There's a, a a metal accessory like a flagpole almost that snaps together and it has a head and here and there and when you know pretend you're actually sitting on it and it's flipped over it on the water it kind of pushes down and it gives the kayak some structure but that aside if you look at the backbone it's crooked you know really this is on one side of the backbone this isn't straight you know you look at the backbone it veers to the left a little and the biggest disadvantage to these is they just don't track very good now maybe the newer models are better if you grab it you can feel something metal the newer ones talk about some ribs aluminum ribs maybe whereas i feel maybe this is more plastic i don't know um it just for going downstream or hauling a lot of weight it's very good but I feel like on a bigger open water situation, especially in the picture, it shows it kayaking through like some fjords in Alaska with the big glaciers dropping down. That sucker, that glacier falls down and you got a 500 foot wave coming at you. It's probably not going to sink this thing. That's where we'll move into the advantages. I'm going to flip it over. Oh. Okay, so here we are. I'm all, the Advanced Elements Air Kayak. You could say it's a long-term review. It's been through a past owner. You're looking at whatever I wrote, I'm going to look at it too. So, uh, the weight is another, in my opinion, a disadvantage. It, it's not crazy heavy, but it's not light. When somebody talks about an air kayak, so the whole thing kind of packs into that bag. And, you know, I've seen some things that say 42 pounds or something. I feel like it's a certainly a heavy 42 pounds. If I had a scale, I'd weigh it. I probably should. I feel like it's about 50 pounds. Um, especially if you throw in that backbone, which is theory. You sit on that. I don't know how much it helps. Um, but I'm not going to pin this all down to disadvantages. At first I was. You know, what it price so right now brand new an advantage is the price so i paid like 735 dollars for two of these and i think the guy was supposed to, he's supposed to throw in two spray skirts he sent me one whatever um we went back and forth on the shipping i've had these a number of years now he told me he kept them in a trash can in his garage i did the same thing but price this kayak, brand new right now, I think. The newer version with the drop stitch floor. That means, to my knowledge, it might be a high-pressure floor. Um, the only thing that's gone bad is the floor. And I think that 
this one has a purge valve kind of it's hard to see but it's back there that red dot that means if you over inflate the floor it psh, will let out some pressure i think they must have had a problem with that the drop stitch floor talks about or the high pressure floor i think that's the drop stitch where you can pump it up to about for PSI, you could actually like stand on it and paddle it. It's very little different than a paddle board. So, but I mean, if you're buying it new for around a little more than thousand dollars, you can get all that. I don't think you get unless you get one of those plastic like hardware. I'm saying it's hard to rival. That's a pretty good price for something. I mean, it's pretty complicated. All kinds of stitching and bladders and whatever. I'm going to say that's an advantage. Uh, durability, that's a big advantage. I know people are like, oh, it's, you got a... First thing I saw my buddy Robbie at Menards, concrete guy, he's kind of into kayaks. Oh, you got one of them poppers. I, I just think that side by side, if you ran this next to, you know, a $1,000 plastic or fiberglass kayak down a raging river i mean this sucker is not gonna sink that easy it's not gonna crack and it's it's got i mean a pretty darn durable nylon it's obviously got a couple different bladders if you did pop it i just feel like durability is a pro on this i think you could really really load this with a lot of weight you get hit by huge huge waves and that goes into safety too is a pro it just doesn't sink i know mean, granted if you're reeling in a huge daredevil lure you know a big treble hook you know going fishing for musky or shark or blue f i don't know what you get that hook snag maybe it goes through it you know i i don't think i'd be it's not really a fishing kayak, but that all I said, being a popper, it doesn't pop that easy. But I would just say, looking at the tracking, now that you can see this, um, when you try to line up all this, especially if, like, I've been fighting a bad back. I got it up on these tables. I'm going to try and line it up again. It's, I don't know if you can see that. It's hard to just line all that up so it comes out right on the bottom in other words you get this effect like i showed you you can't really see it the it's just a little bit misaligned and it maybe i fidget with this a while and i get it perfectly dialed in but the the con to that is every time you're i should write assembly on cons assemble yeah it's on there as a con because it's not like you just throw it together it's almost like See, when I, I'm about probably 5,000 feet from a river. Before I was with, at my grandma's old house where my brother Joey is, we are probably 500 feet from the river. And even at 500 feet from the river, with the weight of it, it's not the lightest thing. Your shoulders are going to get tired carrying it. And it's a little work to pack it into that bag. You still got the same weight. And when you put it together, you know, it's not rocket science, but there's a little bit to it, you know. By the way, it has a terrible seat. I think there might be an option. Get a, I'm just really hoping now with my, bad, my back, my back closer to the age of a middle-aged man-child rather than a younger man-child. I just, I got to come up. I love those kayaks that it has the, the, they're fishing kayaks. It has the seat that you just pick, pick up and put it on the higher position. But, okay, so we'll keep on task here. We can talk about other kayaks. There's a folding kayak, Oru or something. There's a couple different kinds. And I'd like to say it might sink, but it said polycarbonate. I don't know what happens if, you know, it gets over succumbed with water, safety, and all that. But, um, yeah, this is probably pretty durable compared to that. That said, it's a competitor. It breaks down. It looked pretty cool. Um, the folding kayak. I did see a couple super lightweight folding kayaks over in seattle talk to some people they just unfolded them 
I felt like it was more of a pond to toy, not a toy, but I felt like this would just spank it as far. You get a wave, hits that plastic thing, it's going down type of thing. Um, you know, your options, you can still buy the drop stitch floor for this today. It's like $179. Says it helps it track. It's tracking's the main problem. For a while, there was a rudder for like 300 bucks that looked really cool, but I didn't have any 300 bucks. You could devise your own device. I just said to myself, this is a down river kayak. It will cross the Illinois River here, which is a couple miles wide. I'm going to go to my friend Carl's, help him with some weeds. I could get my work bag, my work boots, my a ton of stuff. Here we go into pros. Uh, durability, hauling capacity. You're going camping with everything under the sun. You can get quite a bit zipped underneath these things. I'm not going to unzip it, but there's a good area there. And obviously, plenty of area that you could... I have better luck with kayaks putting weight in the front. In fact, if I recommended a kayak, I just recommended the tandem open one. Because... It's longer, and when you're by yourself, you can just throw your backpack in the front. Unless you're just getting into such high seas that waves... I've had this like this. You know, waves coming over the front. And even... I never use a spray skirt. Not much gets into this kayak. I'll say that. I give it credit there. It's durable. It feels safe. It hauls a lot of weight. Long term, I'm going to rate this good. It's been in a trash can for a few winters in Pappy's car tomb shed. And before that, a guy just kept it in his garage in a trash can. And this has got to be an old, uh, I don't know, what, I'm just guessing. Let's a ballpark at it, 2008. We're in 2023. So fiberglass, I got an old fiberglass ladder over there. It just, just sitting in the yard, it, it cracks looking at it. Like, I don't know how good, I, I think most kayaks, fiberglass or like this, they're built to last a while, but let's put it this way. This thing's passed the test. It's pretty durable. Um, it's pretty, you know what I mean, long term or whatever. It, it doesn't pop that easy. Oh, the bladders are going to rot away. It's been sitting in a trash can. Not really. It's been here overnight. Some of these, I don't really, I mean, I don't know that they even hold air that good, these little bladders. And I think that would help it if they, this one feels pumped up. It's just a thing, you know, you have something that holds air. It cools off outside, you have to air it up. It gets too hot, it warns you about the, uh, you know, the thing popping or something. You don't want to lay it on a, you know, in the in the beaten sun of Florida, you know, when it's aired up to its max. I think I got everything. I hope maybe I help people decide. You know, what's its portability? Yeah, it is an advantage. Technically, you know, it fits in that hockey bag. But, you know, you throw in the paddles that pump a life jacket. Um, you know, probably that hockey bag in another bag. I've tried to think about that. Like, just for shipping and transportation purposes i might buy or pick up that's a huge advanced elements but maybe two hockey bags or something you know to so i it's you have to figure that out portability is a pro i guess you technically can't pack a hard kayak app or can you if you have one of those collapsible ones but we'll leave it a pro that's why people probably buy this. I just think, oh, my table's wet. I was hosing it off. I just think that if you're buying it because you think that it is easy to port, to port, it's not really. I think it's a little heavier. I think that folding one said it was like 35 pounds. This guy, I just think it's close to 50 pounds. I think it's all what you're doing too. I think if you wanted to haul some major gear and go down a river and cross some open water, 
uh, just not factoring in speed, you know, you're not, got, you know, those, you've seen those, sleek, but those sleek kayaks, they're like 7,000, 4,000, yeah, at least a couple thousand, you aren't picking up, you know what I mean, it's price, so there it is, I like doing videos.